Shalom, Most High Christ bless you. It's Sunday, and you're on with Israel United in Christ on WGAI 560 AM. Go check out our website at www.israelunite.org. Our number is 1-855-484-4842. Again, 1-855-484-4842, extension 798. That is extension 798. We are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group or black militia group. Israel United in Christ is a non-violent Bible-based movement. We do not advocate or condone any acts of violence against any race, ethnicity, or gender. We advise that if anyone hears or knows of any plot to cause harm to anyone or to break the laws of land, you must contact the proper authorities to bring awareness to any possible threat, as stated in Leviticus 5 and 1 of the King James Bible. I'm your host, Officer Mishael, Officer Joe, Soldier Seer, and we have in the studio, Israel United in Christ. Our topic today is fornication killing the, killing the community. All right, that's, that's, right. that's today's topic. Fornication killing the community. What community? The Black, Hispanic, and Native American community. All right? Which are the children of Israel. Which are the children of Israel. All right? So we're going to touch on this topic dealing with fornication. Um, as we know, runs rapid throughout the Black and Hispanic community. Uh, we do not uphold uh, the laws of marriage as the Bible states anymore in our community. Uh, thus, uh, happens, STDs, okay, abortions, so forth and so on. And we're going to touch on a couple of these things today. Why is fornication or what we know as sex outside of marriage killing our community, all right? So give me Hebrews 13 and 4. We're going to start there. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13 and verse 4. Uh-huh. Marriage is honorable in all. So you see what the Bible say? If this, if this one principle... Uh, is taught throughout the nation of Israel, you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Read it from the top again. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, and verse 4. Uh -huh. Marriage is honorable in all. The Bible say marriage is honorable, not boyfriend and girlfriend, not sex on the side, okay? Not your side piece, all right? Not you being a pimp, a player, or a prostitute. Read it from the top again. Marriage is honorable in all. The Bible said marriage is honorable in all. Marriage is between a man and a woman. Okay, read. And the bed undefiled. And when you're married, that's when your bed is undefiled. When you're not married and you are participating in sexual activities, guess what? Your bed is defiled. You are defiling yourself, your temple. Read. But whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. You see that? But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Okay, a whoremonger is a is a uh, a male that likes to sleep around with a lot of women, and we know how, we know what adultery is. People sleeping outside of their marriages. But then it say God will judge. How's God judging us? We getting STDs, AIDS, syphilis, uh, gonorrhea. Okay, our young sisters and women are aborting their babies. All right, people are getting killed behind, or you having sex with my boyfriend, or you been having sex with my girlfriend, okay? People are getting killed over these matters. And God is bringing judgment on the nation of Israel because we're not honoring marriage. Read that from the again, from the top. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, and verse 4. Uh -huh. Marriage is honorable in all. Read. And the bed under fire. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So because we're not applying that scripture, like I said before, we are being judged as a nation. So what's been happening? Why we haven't been knowing these things on how to conduct ourselves when dealing with sex, fornication, okay? For one, our leaders, okay, our pastors, they have not been teaching us the right way in how we're supposed to conduct ourselves when it comes down to marriage and having sex. We haven't been taught that. In a lot of Christian homes, Christian homes, boyfriend and girlfriend is allowed. That's right. Okay, I'm going to repeat that again. In a lot of Christian homes, boyfriend and girlfriend is allowed. You want to read about boyfriend and girlfriend in the Bible. That's right. 
You will not read about boyfriend and girlfriend in the Bible. So what, what has happened is a lot of our pastors and leaders, they are in agreement with what America pushes. Okay, give me that in uh, Isaiah 29. You know what I'm talking about? Made a covenant with death. Because that's what's going on. Our pastors have made a covenant with America. So whatever, whatever America pushes, that's what they roll with. Okay? 28.15, I believe. I got you. The book of Isaiah, chapter 28 and verse 15. Uh-huh. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death. You see that? Our leaders, our pastors, political leaders, they have made a covenant with death. We got to understand that. They don't understand the laws of the Bible, especially when it's talking about us carrying ourselves when it, in regards to marriage. Okay, they're in agreement with what America pushes. Read it from the top again. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death. Our leaders have made a covenant with death. Read. And with hell are we at agreement. And with hell, they are at agreement with. What, what, what are they at agreement with? Okay, America pushes dating, the dating scene. Right. Okay, they push lust. America makes billions of dollars off the porn industry. We know this, and they exploit our people in that business. Okay, you know, you know the, the old saying what America says is sex sells. That's right. Okay, sex sells. They they have you can't even watch a regular TV show no more without them showing some type of soft porn, which pushes spirits on our people for them to go out and commit fornication, and then here they go having a venereal disease. So read that again. Because you have said. We have made a covenant with death. Uh huh. And with hell are we in agreement. See that? So our leaders, they made a covenant with death. And then they in agreement, they laying in a bed with America. Because sure. why? They're profiting off of it. They getting fat rich off of us being ignorant to the fact on how we're supposed to conduct ourselves according to the Bible. So if they taught scriptures like this. Give me this in uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and 18. Why are they sitting behind the pulpit, standing behind the pulpit? These are the things that should be coming out of their mouths while you have young women, young daughters, young men in your congregations. So when they leave the church, they know how to conduct themselves. Read that. Start at verse 15. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 6 and verse 15. Uh huh. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? So our people out here in the black, Hispanics, and Native American community, they don't know that their bodies is what? Members of Christ. They don't know that their bodies are members of Christ. They don't know that. Because if they knew that, they wouldn't be out here laying around, whoring around, okay, wanting to be strippers and prostitutes and pimps. They don't know that. Read. Shall I then take the members of Christ uh -huh. and make them the members of an harlot? So Paul is telling us, shall I then take the members of Christ and then make it to a member of a harlot? Right? Read. God forbid. No, you shouldn't do that. Read. Well, know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, said he shall be one flesh. So when you join to the harlot or when you have a sex with someone, a lot of people don't understand sex is spiritual. Okay? It's been scientifically proven that when a woman has sex with a man, she takes on his, when he ejaculates inside of her, okay, she takes on his DNA. That's right. right. It's been scientifically proven. Sex is spiritual, okay? Another human being can come into this world behind having sex. Read it again. Well, know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? Uh-huh. For two, said he, shall be one flesh. That's why a lot of our sisters, okay, is bugged out. Because they've been sleeping with all the men around town and they got all these different types of spirits on them because they have not kept themselves, okay, in being a virgin until their husband. That's right. They've been hoeing around. What you got? So, so obviously what you're saying is basically their bodies is not the members of Christ. Their bodies is the members of Meg Thee Stallion. Right. A Cardi B. Right. Or uh, Lil' Kim. Lil' Kim. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I got it. I got it. Making sure I got it. I'll pray. Yeah, so we, we we have not been conducting ourselves as the Bible states. Finish that off. Uh, verse 16 here. 
Verse 17. Verse 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Read on. Flee fornication. See what the Bible say, dude? See, this ain't being taught in your churches. We don't hear that in the Christian church a lot. Hey, flee fornication. You know why we don't hear it? Because fornication is allowed inside the Christian church. Right. And when I say the Christian church, I'm talking about the black church. And it's just full of whores and whore mongers. Full, full of, of it. it. Full of it. So let's get a scripture. If, by you sitting in them churches and you understand that a whore and a whore monger, let's see what God, let's see, and you thinking you're going to make the kingdom, you you sadly mistaken, fam. Let's get uh, Ephesians 5 and 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 5. Let's see what that say. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5 and verse 5. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. So you see that? You thinking you sitting in these churches and you see what's going on in these churches. God is telling you, you ain't, gonna, you ain't got no... Uh, chance to get in the kingdom if you being a whore monger and a whore. Right. You ain't got no chance. So you, our family, we got to bring this back in our community. Marriage, marriage, marriage. Like he just read in Hebrews 13 and 4, marriage is honorable. That's what's going to bring us back from the brink of death. That's what's going to bring us back. We got to start living this Bible again. Go back to 1 Corinthians 6 and read verse 18 again. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 18. Flee fornication. Uh -huh. Every sin that a man do is without the body. So the Bible is telling us to flee from fornication. Why is it telling us to flee from fornication? Because fornication going to get you killed. That's right. That's right. I'm going to say it again. Fornication will get you killed. And our people don't understand that. They out here just having what they call casual sex. That casual yeah. sex is going to get you six feet under. That's right. Understand that. That's why people got to learn this Bible. You got to be retaught all over again. Okay. So in Babylon, the great, what we know, what, the, what is, that's what the Bible calls it, but we know it as the United States of America. All right. It's been, it's been taught to our young men, black men in particular, to sow your royal oats. And meaning, see how many women you can sleep with before you get married. We've been taught, I know when I was coming up, the older men would teach us, hey, boy, you better you better get all the higher part you can get before you get that one, because when you settle down, that's it. But today, now today, you know what they're pushing on the young boys today? To be homosexuals. Okay. All the rappers is wearing dresses now. So it went from, it went from sleep with all the women you can to now put on a dress mm. and, and, and be a homosexual. So the world is getting more wickeder and wickeder by the day. But let's touch on that point when we was being taught at one point in time to sleep. When you know that old saying, Papa was a rolling stone? Okay, we glorify that thing to see how many women that you could actually sleep with. But let's see what the Bible says about that. Give me Sirach 23. We got to come back to the Bible and be retaught all over again. To learn how to value our bodies, our sons and our daughters' bodies, okay? So all the STDs can stop. All the killing can stop. We could be a holy and pure nation. Read that. The book of Sirach, chapter 23 and verse 17. Uh -huh. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. See that? All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. What are they talking about? A whoremonger, he going to sleep with everything. Everything. If you got a dress on, a skirt on, a wig on, whatever... He gonna lay down with you. Read. He will not leave off till he die. Read that part again. He will not leave off till he die. A man that like to sleep with woman to woman, the Bible say he will not stop until he dead. A lot of times when these men are out here being homemongers, most of the time, I ain't known too many homemongers that haven't got an STD. But when they get an STD, it's been many cases where an individual have caught, caught the HIV AIDS. Right. And he feeling some type of way. He feeling selfish about it, mad about it. Now he start going and sleeping with all these different women unprotected. And now he's passing that disease on to them. Now here they go. They got the disease. And now they laying in the deathbed. They in hospice. Get ready to die because they chose to lay down with this man. Didn't prove him. 
Didn't know he was sitting up. He looked good on the outside, but he was rotten on the inside. He had that monkey. He That's had that right. thing. And see, this is what's going on in the black community. Read it again. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. Uh -huh. He will not leave off till he dies. Read on. A man that breaketh wedlock, saying thus in his heart, Who seeth me? Uh -huh. I am compassed about with darkness. The walls cover me, and nobody seeth me. So you got that? That's the Rolling Stone right there. He go out. He thinking nobody ain't seen. He creeping. He creep. You know that old song TLC used to say, So I creep. Right? That's what yeah. they said. And that's what they said, right? They said. Creeping th throughout the night, going to see how many women he can sleep with for the sun rise up. Hey, and who is he trying to find? Let's let's get first Timothy, I mean second Timothy three. Who is he looking for? The silly women, the wit the, the women that don't know no better. Let's get uh first Timothy's chapter I three. I got you. Okay. Set the book of Second Timothy, chapter three and verse six. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and led captive silly women laden with sin. So read that again. For of, for of this sort are they which creep into houses. Who is creeping into houses? These whoremongers, these men, these, these men, they seeking out these silly women That's and right. doing what? And lead captive silly women laden with sin. And that's what it is. They laid these women laden with sin, man. They, You got women coming in these churches sitting in the front of the church with no panties on. Right, right. right. That's enticing, man. Let's give me, give me one more script to Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Bring it out. Let's bring out what these women are doing to try to attract this kind uh -huh. of lustful that's putting this evil spirit on the earth. Right. Because that is the evil spirit that this women is doing that put our men in a whole among state. Man. Right. So read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Read that one more time. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So it's talking about pants, women. What do a woman do when she first put on pants? Bring it out. She try to put on the tightest pants she can. Some women have to lay down to even button her pants up, to even zip her <laughs> pants up. Right. And suck then, the stomach all the way yeah, in. Yeah, right, suck the right. stomach all the way in. And let's, let's do all kind of crazy stuff just to try to fit in them apple bottom jeans. That's what they that's what they had, oh, apple bottom jeans. What was those jeans for? They make your butt look a certain type of yes. way. Yes. And once they get in on what they do, turn around and look right in the mirror and see how tight and see if they can get any more uh, fit in them. Mm -hmm. But read on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. That That's going into a man putting on a dress. That's right. Because remember, family, all of this whoremongers, this whoremonger spirit, this brain for homosexual, I mean, uh, homosexuality, all of this is a, is, is coming from this, this whoremonging state, man. All of it. So read read that again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So you are abomination to the Lord your God, our God, our God, our God, because he's not looking at you. He told us what we're supposed to be doing, family. Right. So at, uh, at the end of the day, family, we got to train up our children the way they should go. That's right. We ain't putting our children out on the, uh, putting them up for, because when you, like this, when you put your children and let them go have boyfriend and girlfriends, you putting them on the market to be whores and whore mothers. That's right. That's what you're doing. That's right. So let's get a, let's get a scripture in uh, Sirach. 42 and 9. Let's see how a father supposed to deal with his daughter. Bring it out. Let's see how he's supposed to deal with his daughter. He shouldn't be, he shouldn't be letting his daughter this uh go out there and just throw herself around and while he's sitting at home watching this. She bringing a, a new man in the house every two or three months. She, she got another boyfriend. No. Right. We got to come back to what God told us, but read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus or Sirach. Chapter 42 and verse 9. The father waketh for the daughter when no man knoweth, and, and the care for her and the care for her taketh away sleep. So the father posted is sitting there waiting on her daughter, 
he's he's actually losing sleep, worried about how his daughter is being and where she at and what she's supposed to be doing. This is what a true father is supposed to be doing. He's supposed to be worried about if he send his daughter out to the store or whatever, he's he's concerned to her till she come back to the house. He don't let her daughter his daughter go out and stay out all night and come in two or three o'clock in the morning. That ain't what a that ain't what a true father is supposed to be doing. But read on. When she is young, lest she pass away the flower of her age. And being married, lest she should be hated. Read that again. And being married. No lest, other one. Lest she pass away the flower of her age and being married, lest she be hated. So you see that? If she be in her father's house and pass the flower of her age, lest she married, that's what she posted. That's the only time she supposed to pass the flowers of, of her age when she's married. Right. But read on. Verse 10. In her virginity, lest she should be defiled and gotten child. And got him with child in her father's house. So you see that family? That she is defiled if she have a child in her father's house. If her father let her come home and he knows she's pregnant. Remember back in the day, whenever uh, uh, one of our children uh, daughter had a, got pregnant, what would they do? They would send her off to a, uh, her aunt right. or, or some in another town. They wouldn't let her stay around right. because that was that was a shame, right? Yes, that was okay. a shame. Was All of this was Bible. All of this we was we understood. We understood the way we were supposed to raise our children. But now, like the officer this brung out earlier, we made a covenant with death. Right. That's what we did. Right. We we walked away from that. We said, no, nah, we gonna raise our family. Like the like the everybody else is raising up, like a white man is raising their family, right. and we can't raise it. We got to come back to what God told us. Right. Uh, God told us the way we're supposed to keep our children straight and the way we should raise them. But read on. In her virginity, lest she should be defiled and gotten with child in her father's house, and having a an husband, lest she should misbehave herself, and when she is married, lest she should be buried. So you see that. So at the end of the day, family, we got to come back to God, Lord. We got to. We got to get our community back in order. And that's a big part of us getting our community in order is making sure we follow the laws of marriage. Right. That's the only way we're going to bring ourselves back to what we're supposed to be doing. Right. I want to go back to that point where you said in that scripture where it says, um, let she be gotten with child in her father's house. I know there's a lot of black preachers whose daughter have gotten pregnant in their church. PKs. Oh. Preacher's kids. PKs. Right? So I want to read this article. Go to this article. This article we're about to read, it talks about adultery in the black church. And this is going back to the scripture we read earlier about making a covenant with America. Okay? You're in, a, you're in agreement with death. All right? Read that in the yellow. You got that? Yes, sir. This is an article from Essence.com. Apparently, the rampant fornication by the men up in the poor poll. Oh, read that again. Mm -hmm. Apparently, the rampant fornication by the men up in the poor pit. It said the fornic. Now, hold up. These supposed to be the leaders of the flock. That's what they're supposed to be. <laughs> but it says this is a rampant act that's going on with the men that's behind the pulpit. Read. With the wives looking the other way. Read that oh, part again. Man. With the wives looking the other way. The wives, the, what they call the first lady of the church. Oh, man. She turned a blind eye to it. You know why? Because she's benefiting off of it, too. That's right. They they pulling up in the church with the, with the Rolls Royce. Okay. Got the Amartises with the hats. Looking all fly. Got the big old matching. She don't care. She living good. She said, hey, they can have them. But, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm in the big house. Read has reached the boiling point for Price, uh -huh. who started receiving letters from women who were engaged in affairs with pastors. This is what's going on in the black church. The pastor is sitting up there in the pool. That's why we call them pulpit, pulpit pimps. That's right. Okay? Man. <laughs> because they they in the pulpit pimping. Triple P. Okay? They the biggest pimps in, on the block. So we got we got to really look at this thing and what's going on in our communities. Re finish that off. A common thread: access to money and coercion uh -huh. by the pastor using biblical BS. See that? <laughs> so 
these pastors ain't hitting on two cents. I'm going to tell you straight. Because they sit there and hold the Bible. Give me that in Sirach 129. I'm going to show you what they are. They are a bunch of hypocrites. They need to put that Bible down. Right. And if they don't, God is going to judge yeah. them very, very, very harshly for the evil that they are doing, acting like they God-chosen men. Read that. The book of Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 1, verse 29. Uh -huh. Be not an hypocrite in the sight of men. You see what the Bible say? The Bible say, be not a hypocrite in the sight of men. These pastors are a bunch of hypocrites. That's why their daughters are getting pregnant under them. Read. Right. And take good heed what thou speakest. See, take good heed what thou speakest. Because they in the church trying to seem like they, they putting on a show, like they living holy in now. But behind closed doors, man, they, they rotten, okay? Mm -hmm. They spoil rotten. And this is what's going on with our daughters because they, they, like officers were just bringing out, we have no care for our children. Yes, we right. have no care for our sons and daughters. We're teaching them all the bad things that America pushes. This is what we do. Give me that in Leviticus 19. Wow, great. And verse 29. See, we, if we come back to the to the Bible and learn these core values and principles, we're going to start getting better. Our nation going to start healing. Read that. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, and verse 29. Uh -huh. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. You see what the Bible say, dude? The Bible say, do not prostitute your daughter to cause her to be a whore. You know what we do? We allow our daughters to go out on prom dates. Yeah. Oh, man. Yep. And a lot of times, that be the night where a lot of our daughters lose their virginity. On, the, on prom night. Go ahead. In the back of a car. In the back of a car. Look at oh, that. Oh, man. Your daughter lose her virginity in the back of some Negro's car. Mm -hmm. Or you let them go out on, on, on at the school desk. Yep. Okay? You let your daughters go out on dates, unchaperoned. And then they in the back of the movie theater and that boy that you don't really like, but you let your daughter go out with him defiling your daughter. Read it again. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. You see that? The Bible says do not prostitute your daughter to cause her to be a whore. Okay? Read them. Lest the land fall to whoredom and the land become full of wickedness. You see that? Lest the land all into a whore, and that's what's happened. Okay? This land is completely whored out. Okay? We ready for that? Yes, sir. Call in to ask questions or comment at 252-435-2554 is the number. We are excited to hear from you. Once again, that number is 252-435-2554. Call in and ask questions or comment. Boy, I like what you said about them fish, them deep. I mean, uh, them pastors. Let's get Jeremiah 30, 23. Bring it up. Let's see what the God said about these pastors that's not that's that's not doing nothing for our community but robbing us. Hey, call y'all call in because this is a hot topic. This is a heavy topic that don't get talked about a lot in our churches. But we Jeremiah need to talk about it. All right. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 1. Let's see what God said about these pastors that that's destroying our people. And they and they seeing it. Read on. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 23 and verse 1. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. So who is the that's what the pastor is doing? He's destroying the sheep. Who is the we who is the sheep? We are the sheep, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's what we are, the lost sheep. But read on. Saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. Said the Lord. The Lord is going to visit these pastors because they're not telling our people the right way to go. They're not, they're just seeing all of this, this havoc in our community and they're not telling us nothing. Right. They're just sitting there. As long as we bring the ties to them, that's all they're concerned about. Right. But God got a judgment for these people. Right. God got a judgment. Let's go to the last book of the Bible, there and let's are. see what about these whoremongers. These whoremongers, how God going to, if you're going to make it into the kingdom, being a whoremonger. Read on. Read uh, Revelation 22, 
first 15, I think it is. 21 and 8, I believe. 21 and 8. Okay, yeah. The book of Revelation, chapter 21 and verse 8. Uh -huh. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers. And who? And whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all lies shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. So you see that? That's your part. That's your part. That's what the part you're going to get by being a whoremonger. You're going to get the everlasting fire. You ain't going to make the kingdom, family. That's right. We got to come back to being married is honorable. We got to have this thing. We got to put this back in our community. Right. So what I want to do, I want to get this definition of fornication, okay? Because that's, that's, Christian church probably ain't even never heard of Leviticus, the 18th chapter. They yeah. think fornication is just sleeping outside of marriage. No, look, when you read Leviticus chapter 18, it goes through all the laws dealing with fornication. Okay, read the definition for me. The definition of fornication. Uh -huh. Sexual intercourse between people not married to each other. Read it again. Damn. Sexual intercourse between people not married to each other. You see that? Fornication is sexual intercourse between two people that is not married to each other. Okay? You got something else? I'm going to read one synonym. Adultery. Read that again. Oh, adultery. You see that? That's fornication. And we know that runs, as we just read, that runs rapid in the Christian church, which what? Leads to death, leads to murders. Yes, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a domino effect when we're in the midst of that sin. So let's go to Leviticus 18 so we, we all can get a better understanding of some, some forms of fornication, all right? And and the, before you get that, what come with being what being come with being a whore and a whore monger? Uh oh, a, a, a abortion. Mm -hmm. That's what big in our community. We're gonna abortion. touch on that. We're gonna touch on it. All right. So start at give me uh Leviticus eighteen and start at verse one. The book of Leviticus chapter eighteen and verse one. Uh huh. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying. Speak unto the children of Israel uh -huh. and say unto them, I am the Lord your so God. The children of Israel are you blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. Mm -hmm. You right. are the children of Israel. What we bring it out today applies to you. That's right. Okay? Marriage is honorable in the bed undefiled. That applies to the children of Israel. That's right. Because the laws was only given to the children of Israel. That's Read right. on. Verse 3. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwell. Shall ye not do? Now, during this time, the children of Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt. Egypt was known for all types of filth. Uh -oh. If you look on the hieroglyphs, you look on the walls of Egypt, they, they was in participation with a lot of homosexual acts. Yep. Hold it. Give me Revelations 11 and 8. Because today, we are living in spiritual Egypt. Okay? We are living in spiritual Egypt. Read that. The book of Revelation, chapter 11 and verse 8. Uh -huh. After their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of that great city. So our dead bodies are lying in the great, are lying in the street of this great city. Okay, we're not physically dead. We are spiritually dead, read. Which spiritually is called Sodom. Which spiritually is called Sodom. Why is it called Sodom? Because America pushes homosexuality. That's right. Okay, read. And Egypt. And Egypt. Why is it called Egypt? Because... During the time of the Exodus, the Israelites were slaves under the Egyptians. Right. Today, we are slaves under America. If you look on the back of your dollar bill, what, what do you see? The pyramid. Oh, that's right. All right? So we're living in spiritual Egypt. I just want to bring that point out. Now, let's go back to uh, Leviticus chapter 18 and read verse 3 again. Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 3. Uh -huh. After the doings of the land of Egypt, uh -huh. wherein ye dwell, shall ye not do. So the most high, he was telling Israel then, he's telling us now. After the doings of Egypt or America, we shall not partake in none of the lustful, filthy acts. Right. Understand that, people. Read. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, Whither I bring you, shall ye not do. Read on. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. So, and we're going to read about some of that stuff that they was doing. Read. Verse 4. Ye shall do my judgments uh -huh. and keep my ordinances to walk therein. So the Most High said we shall do his judgments and keep his ordinance and we are to walk in them. Read. 
I am the Lord your God. Uh -huh. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. Read verse 6. None of you, none of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him to uncover their naked. So God is telling us, because believe it or not, as quiet as it is kept, incest goes on in the black community. That's right. And we don't like to talk about it. Okay, which leads to a lot of our daughters and sons being living promiscuous lifestyles. Read on. I am the Lord. The nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother shall thou not uncover. Uh -huh. She is thy mother. See that? You're not supposed to be sleeping with your dad. Not supposed to be trying to sleep with your mother. But believe it or not, this goes on in the black community. Jump down to verse 18. Verse 18, neither shall thou take a wife to her sister to vex her, to uncover her nakedness beside the other in her lifetime. You know what that's called? Threesomes. That's right. Menage trois. Menage trois. Our people, especially these men around here, they, hey, you the man if you got two women in the bed with you. <laughs> Read it again. Verse 18, neither shall thou take a wife to her sister uh -huh. to vex her, uh -huh. to uncover her nakedness beside the other in her life. So we're not supposed to be participating in threesomes. Right. Okay, you got these Hollywood couples out here that be swinging, okay? They be having these wild orgies and all this stuff like that. That's, that's supposed to be married. Just recently, we had Will and Jada Smith. She's out here. What they? What they? Yeah, not, not orgies, also entanglement. Entanglement. My bad. Entanglement. Enta what is an entanglement? <laughs> That's adultery. Mm. That's right. Okay, and Will Smith just sitting around. He letting he's supposed to have put her away. That's right. That's what's supposed to happen. This young boy coming, he coming, taking your wife sleeping with her, and you calling it an entanglement. No, that was adultery. Okay. Read that verse 18 again. And also the dude that she slept with, the singer, uh -huh. was her son's best, best friend. friend. You see that? You best see the friend. wickedness we are part of? That's why we got to come out of the mindset of America. Hmm. America don't mean us no good in no way, shape, form, or fashion. We got to change our mindset. Read that verse 18 again. Verse 18. Neither shall thou take a wife to her sister, uh -huh. to vex her, uh -huh. to uncover her nakedness beside the other in her lifetime. So we ain't supposed to be involved in threesomes. Okay, jump down to verse 20. Verse 20. Moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her. That's going into thou shalt not commit adultery, which, which, is, which is rampant in the black community, in the Hispanic community. Okay, read on. Verse 21. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech. Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. So you know what that is? Uh -oh. That's going into your abortions. Better slow down, officer. Okay. Slow down. Because when you doing all these sexual acts, somebody wind up getting pregnant. Uh -oh. That's right. Now you don't want the baby. Now you go to an abortion cl clinic and commit murder. And say it ain't my fault. And, right. That's what the Mormons say. No accountability. This is why we say fornication is killing our community. Okay? Because we're literally killing lives behind having sex, behind committing fornication. Okay? Okay? It's, a, it's numbers out there now that we have killed. The black community have killed 19 million babies. Man. 19 million. And mm -hmm. then be at the, then be at the marches talking about Black Lives Matter. Right. Damn. But you killing 19 million. Man, that's a nation. That's, that's a, a nation. nation. That's more than some nations have in their nations of people. 19 million, that's, that's a nation of people. Hey, you know how many mothers who teenage daughters have gotten pregnant and the mother say, listen, I don't know what you're going to do with this baby. But it can't be here. I ain't. I listen. I work two jobs. I can't help you take care of this child. So we going down to the abortion clinic. You got to get rid of this child. You know how many times this happened in the black in the black houses? Yeah. Okay, because the daughter wanted to be fast and go out and be sleeping around, and she wound up pregnant. Now the mother like, uh, oh, you can't have, you can't keep this baby. The baby got to go. Read that again. 
Uh, Molet. Verse 21. Verse 21. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech. Uh -huh. Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. So we're not supposed to be aborting our babies. Okay? Read on. Verse 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. The Bible tells us, because now th that spirit right there, what they call it? The LG what? LG, BTQ, H I. Yeah. All, all the alphabet numbers. <laughs> the alphabet boys. Yeah, the alphabet boys <laughs> and girls. Okay. Read that again. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. We shall not be in homosexual acts or lesbian acts. Okay. God said that's an abomination. Let's see what God feels about abominations. Give me that. It's a rock. God hates that thing. That's right. He can't stand that thing. Really, you you you're not pro life. You you anti life. That's right. That's right. Okay. If you put a if you put a hundred women on an island by themselves forever, guess what? They're gonna die off because there's no the man place. there to continue on the nation. That's right. Women can't make a nut. Can't can't create a nation. The nation comes from the man. Read. The book of Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 15 and verse 13. Uh-huh. The Lord hated all abominations. You see that? You see how we see what God feels about homosexuality? Okay. He hates that thing. Read. And they that fear God love it not. Right. If you fear God, you don't love that act. Go back to Leviticus. And, re and remember, family, all of this, all these laws are set up to build a nation, a strong right. nation. Remember, we this is this is what was supposed to keep us the strongest nation on the earth by keeping these laws and governing us uh, on how we're supposed to deal with each other. Right. But, read, but keep on, officer. Go ahead. The book of Leviticus, chapter 18 and verse 22. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Read on. Verse 23, neither shall thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It is confusion. That is, going, that is going into bestiality. Man. We be thinking, oh, black folk don't do that. Black uh -uh. folk and Hispanic that's folk do do that. Truth. That's the truth. Okay, our Northern Kingdom brothers down there, they, they, uh, uh, from what I understand, the young boys, they break their virginity by going and having sex with a donkey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They run and having sex with donkeys and stuff the like that, man. Boys yeah, they be doing it, having that, sex man. with chickens and all that stuff like that. Our people be doing this stuff. Read that again. Neither shall thou lie with any beast of the father thyself therewith. Uh -huh. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It is confusing. So with the LGBTQ movement, see, when it goes from man to man, right. woman to woman, yeah. now they try to, what's the uh, organization called? NAMBLA. NAMBLA. Right? Right. right? They're trying to get rights to be able to marry a little boy. Next, you're going to be, they're going to be pushing, where well, they're already pushing, to marry their dog or their cat. You're going to be able to marry your broomstick for it's all said and done. Yeah. And People are doing that, that right now. And all that come with homosexuality. All of that, all of that, what he just said is, is coming. It opened the door for all manner of evil. All manner. So you better look for it, family. I, I've seen a, a video today uh, about they get ready to teach the children on how to ejaculate. They're going to teach the kindergarten mm, 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 mm. on how to, what they need to do to ejaculate, uh, what they're going to do if, uh, if uh, you have an abortion, they teach all kind of manner of wickedness to our children because we open up the door to homosexuality. Right. So we gotta we gotta stop it. Go ahead. Can I get a quick script? Yeah, go ahead. Let me get Ecclesiastes eight and eleven. Because with these whoremongers out here, men and women, it's a certain spirit that comes with them. I'm gonna give you an attribute of a whoremonger. Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 8 and verse 11. This is what every whoremonger says. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Because they ain't been judged right then and there when they do some wicked stuff like whoremonger. Oh, I slept with this, this man's wife. Oh, I did this. Oh, man, I went to the club and got off with three women. 
because they didn't get HIV or STDs or something like that right then, what happened? Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. I That's right. I didn't catch that last time. I might as well do it again. That's oh, why the man. officer said earlier, all bread is sweet to a whole month. Right. If don't nothing happen to them, they're going to keep doing it. That's right. You right. ran one light, it'd be like, I ran the red light today. I ain't going to get pulled over. I'm going to do it again. Right. Same thing. Right. Go back to Leviticus 19 and read verse 24. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19 and verse 24. Uh-huh. But in the fourth year of all the fruit, there will... No, Leviticus 19, 24. Leviticus 19, 24. Yeah. Hold on. Defile not yourselves. You do? Mm -hmm. Oh, 18, 18, 24. 18, 24. Leviticus 18 and 24. Defile not yourselves in any of these things. Uh -huh. For in all these things the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. Read it again. Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things. So, most I don't want us to defile ourselves in any of these things that's against the laws of marriage. That's what we bring it out. How how do you keep yourself from not being entangled in this evil? We're going to bring it out now. Give me Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. We're going to give you the solutions not to be a homosexual, not to be a whore, not to be a pimp or a pulpit pimp. Okay, we're going to show you what the Bible say to do to fix that problem. Because when you're in the midst of that, it only leads to death. That's right. That's right. Read the book of Colossians, chapter 3 and verse 5. Uh -huh. Mortify, therefore, your members, uh -huh. which are upon the earth. Read fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection. You see that? The Bible tells us to mortify our members, meaning we got to subdue our body. We got to kill all these evil things that's inside our spirit. Right. Read on. Read it from the top again. Mortify. Therefore, your members, Read. which are upon the earth, uh -huh. fornication. Fornication, we got to kill that thing. We got to get that thing out of our spirit. Read. Uncleanness. Uncleanness. Read. Inordinate affection. Inordinate affection is strong sexual evil sex. Right. Sexual desires. Read. Evil concupiscence. Evil conspiracy. Going to more sexual desires. Read. And covetousness. Uh-huh. Which is idolatry. So we have to mortify. Man. We have to subdue. We have to kill off those evil spirits. Give me uh 1 Thessalonians 4 and 3. The book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4 and verse 3. Uh-huh. For this is the will of God. Read. Even your sanctification. Uh huh. That ye should abstain from fornication. We should what? Abstain from fornication. The Bible tells us to abstain from fornication. Right. Once again, I'm going to go back to the black Christian church and you Hispanic churches. You're not excluded either. Because when we're talking about the black church, we're talking about you also because you are the Israelites too. Read it again. For this is the will of God. Uh huh. Even your sanctification. Read. That ye should abstain. From fornication. The Bible tells us to abstain from fornication. Read. Verse 4. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. You see that? We're supposed to know how to possess our vessel in sanctification and honor. But if it's not being taught, you're not going to know how to possess your body. You understand what I'm saying? You got some awesome? Yeah, let me bring about one more thing on whoremonger, because our people don't understand the the really what whoremongering is. Let me get Tobit 4 and uh, 12. Bring it out. This is part of whoremongering, family, because remember what I said, This is all these laws were set up for nation building. That's what our people don't understand. All of these laws were set up to govern, to make us a strong nation on this earth. So when we go against these laws, we killing our nation. That's we right. killing it. So let's see what's another form of being a whore or a whoremonger. Read on. The book of Tobit, chapter 4, verse 12. Beware of all whoredom. So God is telling our children of Israel, beware of all whoredom. Let's see what this whoredom is he's telling us to beware of. Read on. And chiefly, take a wife of the seed of thy fathers. What is that going into, family? This is talking about you marrying the other nations. That's right. This is when we marry the other nation, we kill our community. We kill our community. Mm. We kill. This is not nation building, family. When right. we go outside and 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 deal with the other nations like right, that. Right. So let's read that again. Beware of all horror. 
my son, and chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy fathers. Read on, read on. And take not a strange woman to wife. Take not a what? A strange woman to wife. What is that strange woman? The other nation, whether it be the, the so-called white woman, Chinese woman, Arab woman. Read out. The, the African woman, all of these are the, the strange women to God because God was only dealing with the children of Israel. That's right. So you so you can't be pro-black and date outside the race? No, no. No, my bad. no you're killing, your, you killing yeah. your race when you do that because it's going to spread it. Read on. And take not a strange woman to wife, which is not of thy father's tribe. Read on. For we are the children of the prophet. Who is the children of the prophet? And the children of Israel, God's right. chosen people. Read on. Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Remember, my son, that our fathers from the beginning, even that they all married wives of their own kindred. Say that again. They all married wives of their own kindred. So you see that? So our forefathers always married wives of their own kin because they understand that was nation building. They understand that was going to bring us to a great and mighty nation. You would have said, it said they married. There you go. That's they right. married wives. That's right. Just to, just to turkey back off there, give me 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and start at verse 2 because that's what we push here in IUIC. Marriage. That's right. No boyfriend and girlfriend, no dating, nothing like that. Read that. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 7 and verse 2. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. So to avoid fornication. Paul is going to tell us the way not to be in the midst of fornication. What is the solution? Let every man have his own wife. You see that? We just read that in Tobit. Oh, man. Let every man have his own wife. Not girlfriend, not boo thing, not thought, not a wop. Your own wife, read. And let every woman have her own husband. Every woman have your own husband. It didn't say nothing about man and man, woman and woman, man and dog. Read it, read it all the way through one more time. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. Let every man have his own wife, uh -huh. and let every woman have her own husband. Let every woman have her own husband. These are the things that needs to be applied in our community. You got some officer? No, go ahead. Go so ahead. what we got to do is we got to repent. Right. We got to come back to truly understanding this Bible and what it's really saying to us on how we need to conduct ourselves. Now, going back to the Christian church, one law that they probably never applied in the church is 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 tells us today on how we're supposed to conduct ourselves when somebody's in the midst of fornication. But in the Christian church, when a, a fornication, adultery is going on in the church, nobody is being put out. You may get taken down from the choir or you may can't be on the usher board no more, <laughs> but you're still allowed to come to the church. Yeah. Why are you in the midst of your sin? We know this going on. We know this going on. We know it. Read that. We're going to show you how you're supposed to conduct that thing when that when fornication is going on inside the Christian church. Read. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 5 and verse 1. Uh -huh. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. Uh -huh. And such fornication as is not so much as name among the Gentiles. So he said, Paul tells us some fornication going on that we don't even hear about the Gentiles doing. Read. That one should have his father's wife. See that? So in the church of Korea, we had a brother sleeping with his father's wife, sleeping with his stepmother. Read. Verse 2. And ye are puffed up, uh -huh. and have not rather mourned, that he that have done this deed may be taken away from among you. So Paul is telling you, hey, you ain't dealt with this situation. Okay? You ain't put that brother out. Read. Jump down to verse 7. Verse 7. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, uh -huh. that he may be a new lump. Read. As ye are unleavened, for even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Matter of fact, jump up to verse 5. Verse 5. To deliver such in one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh. So when somebody, this brother was sleeping with his stepmother, when somebody's doing that in, his, in the church, you are supposed to deliver them unto Satan. Read that again. 
to deliver such in one unto Satan uh -huh. for the destruction of the flesh. It's for the destruction of the flesh. Read. That the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. The, the reason why you put them out to save the spirit, right? Now jump down to verse 7. Verse 7. Purge up, therefore, the old leaven, uh -huh. that ye may be a new lump. So you got to put that wickedness out so you can be a new lump. Read. As ye are a leaven. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Now jump to verse 11. Verse 11. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator. So you can't, the Bible telling us, if you know somebody that's in the midst of fornication, you are not to keep company. That's why we put them out of the church. Right. You churches got to start doing this so we can heal our nation. Read. Or covetous. Uh-huh. Or an idolater. Read. Or a railer. Uh-huh. Or a drunkard. Uh-huh. Or an extortioner. An extortioner going into you pastors taking 10%. We, your, your members ain't supposed to be keeping company with you. Sorry right. to say. Read. With such in one, not none to not know not to eat. So this is what we have to do, family. Okay, and we are the time is almost up. We we have to start applying these laws dealing with fornication. Okay, go back to Hebrews thirteen and four. We're gonna we're gonna finish it off with that. The book of Hebrews, chapter thirteen and verse four. Uh huh. Marriage is honorable in all. So that's the point, brothers and sisters. Marriage is honorable. In all, read. And the bed undefiled. And when you marry, your bed is undefiled. As long as you have a sex outside of marriage, you are defiled. That's uh, right. Understand that. And you're killing our nation. Read. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. You whoremongers and you adulterers, whether you're in the church or outside of church, God will judge you if you don't repent. Okay, so that's what we push for our people to repent, come back to the law, statutes, commandments, and the faith of Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, so right. we can get our kingdom back. And that's with right. that, we say shalom. Shalom. Thank you for joining us. We also have a YouTube page. Just type in IUIC in the classroom. Also, our physical school is located at 111 South Market Street, Benson, North Carolina, 27504. That is 111 South Market Street, Benson, North Carolina, 27504. And we thank you, brothers and sisters. Like I said, I hope everybody got edified today um, dealing with the topic fornication killing our community. All right? Let me get one more script. Seems like we got a little bit more time. Give me Revelations 18 and 4. The book of Revelations. Chapter 18 and the fourth verse. Uh -huh. And I heard another voice come from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, Read. that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues. You see that? So that's what we're telling our people. We have to come out of, who is the hurt? Uh, the hurt is talking about America. That's right. We have to come out of her mindset, the philosophies, the evil that we have learned here. Okay, read it from the top again. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, uh -huh. that ye be not partakers of her sins. Don't partake in America's sins, read. And that ye receive not of her plagues. And that you receive not of her plagues, because America has a judgment that is coming. Understand that. So we need to be preaching and practicing marriage, all right? And with that family, we say shalom. 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 That's our grace blessed. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.